This is Nathan. Welcome to the WADFAM Chalk Pod, where humor, analysis, and excitement are just around the corner. Are you ready? Come on, let's go for another episode of the WADFAM Chalk Pod. Hello and welcome to the WADFAM Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. And I'm Andrew Sabo. And uh, we're, we're here this week to talk about uh, episode 679, The Green Ring Conspiracy, part one. Yeah, we are. Woo, woo. We're finally covering Green Ring. Hey, it's it happening, folks. It only took us well over 100 episodes. Uh, what are we at? 124 at this point or something like that? Uh, I, this, this will be 121. This will be 121. There you Not go. Not counting the two Christmas bonuses that we didn't number. Dylan. Dylan, you need to forgive yourself for that. I will never. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is a weird episode album thing to talk about because uh, so this episode is track one off of album 63, The Green Ring Conspiracy. Yes. That's right. The whole yeah. album is just Green Ring Conspiracy, yeah. parts one through 12. They were all written and directed by Paul McCusker. They all aired a week after each other. They are... Part one is track one, and part two is track two. So, like, we're not going to be doing that every episode here. Yeah, no. There's just, there's no reason. No, no. So If you get it, you get it. Right. So, we, we're, we're establishing now that Paul McCusker wrote and directed them. Um, the mm -hmm. So, this, this episode aired March 12th of 2011, and it will continue to air every week. Um, wow. And I just... Over 10 years ago. Right, so the, the, this is the thing. Well, there, there's a couple things here that I had a revelation realizing, but I would like to just start off with uh, Andrew. Mm -hmm. We often do the "What's your relationship to Odyssey?" Everyone here knows our relationships to Odyssey, but yes. what's your relationship to the Green Ring Conspiracy? Uh, so this was an album that I, I think, was the last. It was the last Odyssey album I got for Christmas because that was like pretty much the only time that I ever got to like get copies and keep them uh, was like Christmas gifts. And I got the Truth Chronicles and I got the Green Ring Conspiracy both on the uh, like the full album CD set and I burned them right to my iPod. Um, I have listened to the Green Ring Conspiracy while mowing the lawn, while skiing, um, while driving grossly long distances. Um, yeah, I have a, I have a long, like a long history in this almost m more, uh, more modern, like as an adult, I suppose, um, or, or more closely related to an adult, uh, adult memories linked to this album compared to older Odyssey. So yeah. W but what about you, Dylan? What do you got? What's your, what's your story behind your green ring conspiracy love? Yeah. Well, so, so this is. We, we've often cited this as kind of like the end of Odyssey for me. There, mm -hmm. I actually did, you know, go a little bit past this. Mm -hmm. um, but this is like kind of the last big arc. <laughs> the um, last one we cared about. <laughs> right. But I think the thing that's, that's yeah, that, that was just interesting. So this is during the time period in which I was listening to Odyssey on Wits End Online. Yep. Yeah. Um, so for me, that started the first like odyssey i was hearing not on an like hearing first on the radio before it was on an album mm -hmm. started for me with passages okay and continues through the next i um actually let me check i think the the labyrinth is the end of it for me yeah which we will hit in this arc mm -hmm. that was my like hard cutoff um and so yeah you this is square in in the pocket for me as far as like listening as it's coming out i am 12 when these episodes are airing which is like perfect yeah in my opinion because odyssey shoots for that like 8 to 12 demographic mm -hmm. but especially with these episodes being a little bit more mature yeah um i just yeah it was like right in right in the pocket for I felt like I was spoiled. Yes. Like, I was like, they gave us this whole album. Like, I knew that Novacom was spread so long and, like, like getting it when it's just 12 parts, the same thing, just 
Right. Just eat your little heart out, 11-year-old Andrew. <laughs> right. Well, because it's an interesting thing where we get Darkness Before Dawn, which mm-hmm. is 11 out of 12 episodes are mm-hmm. the conclusion to Blackguard. And Battle Lines, where 12 out of the 12 episodes are the conclusion to Novacom. But in both instances, they're the conclusion. Yeah. So it was over years of spread out time, this thing built, and then it was all brought to it brought to an end Mm -hmm. in like one album shot whereas this is starting from scratch one with an album Mm -hmm. and building out that way yeah what a hard commit (laughs) right which is just and then like right they do deal with like a handful of you know maybe a half dozen episodes post this album which we'll Mm -hmm. be covering that deal with the aftermath of this Mm -hmm. but it is very much just like we're just going to tell, like, a contained story in 12 episodes, which is not a thing that they've done no, before. No, It's, uh, and, yeah, very, very unique. And and they've said... only done it once since with Ties the Bind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one we will never cover. <laughs> Indeed. Because um, I don't think anybody would enjoy that. No, um, no. <laughs> that one should be the lost episodes, honestly. Those are the episodes that should be forgotten. <laughs> I yeah. will take Pamela has a problem over the ties. That, well, no, <laughs> nah. it's a du- it's a deluxe album. It's twenty four tracks, uh, but but yeah, yeah. nineteen seventy five and just gave us way too much. <laughs> Thank you for that joke. That is only for me and no one else. Hey, uh, does Michaela like nineteen seventy five? Yeah. Okay. Fair. Michaela, there you go. There we go. <laughs> it it it. it it's so beneficial that we know one of our listeners. <laughs> yep. So uh, other other stuff. Let's let's get into cast because mm-hmm. it's gonna be a big one. Mm-hmm. So like we we've talked about a lot of this stuff before, especially coming off the Rydell saga that we were just covering. Um, so we have Andre Stoka as as Wit again. Um, Will Ryan as Eugene. Wonderful. Surprising no one. Yep. Um. We have a different actor for Matthew Parker. This is um, Zach Callison playing. Um, is this the first Matthew? Correct. Okay. Correct. He's the original Matthew. He played Matthew for the first four years mm-hmm. um, until the episode Mission Unaccomplished. And then it switched over to a different guy. And then it switched over to the guy who's currently doing it. Zach Callison uh, plays a character called Brian Corbett on The Goldbergs, okay. um, which yeah, is a yeah. sitcom. He also plays a character on Steven Universe called Steven Universe. Yep, the main. <laughs> yes. He, he, yeah. He's not the supporting actor, in case you're wondering. No, no I, I, I believe the show is named for him. Um, yeah, that's a show that I've been actually meaning to watch for quite some time i got super into adventure time and then everybody that liked adventure time was like oh you'll love steven universe but now that i have an odyssey tie-in poof that's gonna push me over the edge oh there, there you go that's what it's <laughs> gonna take um the the so this is the thing i wanted to talk about here while we're kind of setting up the um context well yeah and while, while we're talking about matthew parker this this is a weird thing that i was thinking about thinking about matthew and and everything else the fact i mean he's been played by multiple people and whatnot but matthew parker was a main character introduced in the soft reboot of odyssey with album 51 Mm -hmm. as like the next one of like these next kids yeah yeah like the new jimmy essentially sure they have matthew has been one of these core kids now for over 10 years wow there are more matthew episodes than jimmy episodes wow and it and jimmy only existed as a core character on the show for eight years and then showed up in some episodes after that I'm so old. Whereas Matthew Parker has now been around for 10 years, been in 76 different episodes, played by three different actors. But it was this interesting realization for me when I was like, oh, Odyssey's philosophy 
changed at this reboot, I think, a little bit. Mm -hmm. In that they're not phasing characters in and out Mm -hmm. like they used to. It used to be you got, you know, the Jimmy and Lucy era, and Mm -hmm. then, like, we aged into whoever was next. And we got, you know, Trent and Mandy, and we got the Washingtons and whatever. And they just kind of cycled kids, like, aged kids out. Mm-hmm. put new ones in you know yeah trent's getting too old we'll add in grady yeah whatever like that was very much the template that odyssey followed and in what we affectionately call new odyssey mm-hmm. in your album 51 plus they have they either have the actors changing mm-hmm. as the kids age like, they keep recasting in a way that they didn't before, where it used to be, like, you, like, as a kid, when the actor aged out of it, they aged the kid out of the show. Yeah. Now they do one of two things. They either recast it with a new kid, or they just hire an adult from the get-go, mm-hmm. which is what we have with Emily mm-hmm. being voiced by Christina Pacelli. It is... It's a really interesting thing. And obviously, like, they have small characters, whatever, that come and go, like, in that we, like, like, Jules comes in at what ties the bind and is now Mm -hmm. still in it. And obviously, we get Suzu and Mori coming in later. But the fact that Matthew, Emily, both, all, you know, Matthew's siblings, we've got Olivia as well. Similar voices. Plus... Right, plus Jay Mm -hmm. and Buck. Like, all of these people have been in Odyssey for 10 years now. Wow. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That is bonkers. That, yeah, I mean, I guess because they made the switch to hiring mostly professional voice actors as opposed to the, you know, the beginning era where it was a lot more kind of cobbled together with what they had. And, uh, yeah, I mean... I probably prefer the older way in the sense that I really liked the constant changing of cast, but I I also understand that a show kind of like like Odyssey that has done so much with the same characters in the form of like, you know, Eugene and Connie and Wit, um like they just have to stick with their guns and kind of play like the Simpsons route where right. people don't so- really come the this this is exactly the thing i was going to point out is it now in doing this it feels more like a traditional especially animated Mm -hmm. television show yeah where they don't really like time doesn't matter they don't really age the characters yeah except for a little bit here and there when needed Mm -hmm. um and everyone just kind of perpetually because like who know like uh, there's no judgment on is the you know are the matthew parker and emily jones here younger than rydell revelations yeah probably yeah but like barely yeah like, by like what two years maybe like we're talking right. difference between like sixth and eighth grade yeah, or something it, that, that's exactly what it feels like is yeah. it's like okay they moved from like young middle school to old middle school yeah. over the course of 10 years yeah, and and again, it's just to these really microscopic, uh, probably incredibly calculated uh, aging decisions that just you know service whatever plot conveniences they they have and, yeah. and that they need. And um, going off that, the crazy thing that this episode does, which it, I'll, I'll get into it, uh, they bring it back uh monty is revealed at the end of the episode and right. he's like revealed to be in his what like like a young man yeah, in his he, early, early 20s, 20s is the is the way that she describes him i'm right. willing to say that she she bet young he's in his you know late 20s uh maybe he moisturizes a lot or something i don't yeah. know but like hearing that okay right, so right. monty was like eight when <laughs> when he was on and he was last you know, appeared in, like, album seven. Like, <laughs> right. what? <laughs> right. Yep. And that was in 1990? <laughs> yeah. Basic. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Like, it has been 
at the point of this episode, 20 years since yeah. Monty had been on the show. Yeah. So, and we'll get into more of that as he, you know, becomes an actual character during this arc. Yeah, but, I'm excited. You know, at the moment, we just know that he's here. So, so yeah, other other actors was I mean we've we've talked before about um about Whit Hertford playing Jay Smouse mm-hmm. um that that's come up obviously Christina Puselli doing Emily Jones um we talked I think a little bit about uh Detective Polehouse at one point yeah we did um did he did he show up in an episode we were talking about or mm-hmm. did we just talk we I think we maybe talked about him as an actor because he's in. He's in, oh oh that's why yeah because he voices Corelli mm-hmm. in um the uh su- right no what what is the uh what is the Power Boy symbol for health episodes other side oh, of the glass. glass yeah 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 um he voices Corelli in that he also voices Leonard Meltzner Eugene's dad um oh and wow. we're getting him here as um Detective Polehouse which is like who he is throughout this whole he's a good cop saga. not much for social skills <laughs> right um yeah uh-huh uh and uh so so phil proctor's uh one of these like voice actor guys that they tend to get on this show who's just had you know over 200 credits in just like really small roles Mm -hmm. over the years um he's notably the pizza planet announcer in the first toy story which i think is fun um and then he's like he's like the airline like robotic voice or something in toy story 2 like he's (laughs) he gets some of those um those sorts of credits but he doesn't have anything that's like super major like oh yes this is like the thing that you can totally define him in. Mm-hmm. Like in The Lord of the Rings, The Battle for Middle Earth 2, a 2006 video game, he voices orcs. Nice. <laughs> just just all of them. Just all of them. Well, you know, uh, I, I had the game. Pretty nice. Not going to lie. And uh, wow. The idea that that man that I'm seeing his picture made those noises is kind of terrifying. <laughs> That's hilarious. I guess his his one like, you know, arguable. Yeah, I mean, like the 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 role that he's maybe recognized for outside of Odyssey would be uh, playing Howard Deville on Rugrats. Oh, okay. Um, which the Rugrats as previously, and L- right? <laughs> as previously established, we have no relationship to, but is uh, that's a major major role for him, and mm-hmm. you know, we we should at least acknowledge it. He was also on the animated Tick show. Um, though he wasn't really playing any specific specific characters, he was just additional voices. Um, but you know, we still we loves it. the tick. I I do love the tick, and <laughs> well, and we talk about that show a lot because of Townsend Coleman. Yep. Um. So and Jess Harnell and you know everyone. So it it has to. It's be either mentioned. the tick or Rugrats. <laughs> yeah. So so that's that's Phil Proctor who's who's playing. Um, Mr. Detective Polehouse. Detective Don Polehouse. Great, great man. Um, we've got uh, Georgina Cordova voicing Nelson Swanson, who mm-hmm. we've also talked about before. Um, but I, I had this realization today, and I think I'm right, in that Nelson is the only child mm-hmm. to be in to be in episodes with McCusker and Stotka. Cause he was, cause Nelson shows up. His first thing is truth Chronicles, which is Stoke's yes, last yes. thing. Oh no, no. Ms. Um, Paul Herlinger's. Oh, last sorry. Thing. Is right. Is Herlinger's last thing. Yeah. And then, and then, and Stoka. then, and then yeah. he's now in with Stoka's new How stuff. How about that? So huh. I, and there, there might be other kids, but it just jumped out to me. It was like, Oh, Nelson is absolutely one of those. Oh um, yeah, because Matthew's in the, Matthew's not in. Um, no. Who's the protagonist in Kidsboro? Oh, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan. He's the one that 
Never mind. We've talked about it. I'll just go back and listen to one of the old episodes, like yeah. you should do. And but yeah, maybe it, I don't it know. is this weird life. thing where like it's not like Nelson. Like Nelson's not a character who really continued, but he is like a weird holdover. Yeah, I mean, where he I've... was introduced in like the eleventh hour of yeah. Hurlinger's wit. Wow, and then I must they have keep him at the beginning of. I that. have a strong relationship with uh, with Nelson. Then I always assumed that he was everywhere because he's in like six episodes total or something. Like, yeah, it's yeah, not... he's in this and he's in the Truth Chronicles, which were the only thing from this era I had. Right, <laughs> fair. Um, we also we have uh, Jim Ward playing Wally Hagler. Mm. Um, so uh, Jim Ward played uh, Charles Xavier on Wolverine and the X Men. Oh. Um. And uh, Doug Dimadone, um, owner of the Dimsdale Dimadome. What? Uh, fairly odd parents. <laughs> I broke it. I broke it. Oh my gosh. Jim Ward plays Doug Dimadome. <laughs> owner of the Dimsdale Dimadome. Very well done. <laughs> um, and he has got, he's got like 300 IMDb credits. Yeah, like yeah, he's, yeah. he's one of the, yeah. He's a titan. <laughs> um we have He's probably uh, just chilling around salami and they grabbed him yeah we also we have uh keith ferguson playing uh ted humphreys the uh the not link wayne right of this episode mm. um he plays uh flint Hart glomgold in the new ducktales um he played deputy derland on gravity falls oh. um big fan of that uh colonel candy corn in adventure time hey there's your adventure time sir he also, this, this is my favorite credit of his, he is Lightning McQueen whenever they can't get Owen Wilson. <laughs> so, that's amazing. So all of the shorts, yep. all of the video games. <laughs> that's, 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 that's delightful. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, what's, yeah. his, what's the actor's name? Uh, Keith, Keith Ferguson. Ferguson. And he's got another 200 plus IMDb credits. Wow. What a cheeser. And then uh, finally, we've got uh, Laurie Tritel as Lily Graham, uh, Dr. Lily Graham. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, and she just has like some minor voice performances in the uh, on IMDb. Um, and she she also she she's played one other character on Odyssey, which is a character called Nurse Fillmore. Oh. So I like that she only plays Dr. She she played Nurse Fillmore in Life in the Third Person. Oh. Um and then came back years later as Lily Graham, uh, Dr. Lily Graham. So I like that she got promoted from nurse to doctor and also got married. I, it's just my headcanon that she, it's the same character. She found love in med school. Right. Don't we all? Yeah. Well, everybody that goes to med school. Yeah. I mean, you, you gotta. You're, you don't have a social life. You're in med school. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, with that being said... Uh, are we ready to move into this album promo to this episode promo? I, I, I think we are. So yeah, we, we will do, we will do the episode promo. So yeah, th this is a fun thing. There are three album promos for this that I yeah. know by heart. Yep. Me too. <laughs> there are also possibly, I don't know if it's every episode or, you know, just this one, but there, there are two promos for this episode as well interesting so i'm just gonna play the one because yeah i we, we can't be bothered to do two on the next adventures in odyssey mysterious visitors bring trouble to odyssey i'm going out to gower's field to see the plane crash one of the visitors has a surprising connection you know him i certainly do but why is he here what's going on you have to see what's inside this backpack it's full of money. Hear the first episode of the Green Ring Conspiracy next time on Adventures in Odyssey. Ah, oh, you feel those those resounding horns. We're in uh we're in post album fifty Odyssey, and it shows. That's a yeah. nice tight promo. Uh, mm -hmm. very sterile. Yep. Uh, wouldn't we've be got Chris being being the voice. It's yeah. you know clips of the show interspersed a uh, note from the official guide that includes through album 55 so this album oh shout out to uh johnny youngblood yes who, sir uh, mailed us the new official guide many My thanks hero. to you yeah uh, a friend of the pod as it were the only friend of the pod who hasn't been on it johnny youngblood i'm, I'm okay <laughs> with that 
We'll talk about it afterwards, Dylan. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so this album was like we like we said. So it, it was in the kind of the soft reboot era. We have a new voices wit. Uh, a tumultuous time for for odyssey and focus on the family um and so uh mccusker got them got the idea uh of just putting out a conceptual album together as kind of a let's you know just give it everything that we've got and uh you know get get our listeners back on board because they had received a lot of backlash about the new wit and the new era and it's a big change uh considering the change from um Oh, goodness. Hal Smith to Paul Herlinger. Wow. Right. I remember both their names this time. Well done. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a lot rougher of a transition. Like you said, it's like a soft reboot. So right. they got them back on board. Um, they originally talked about doing one based on love, which we get later in clanging, uh, was it clanging cymbals? Yeah. And sound and gongs. The one about uh, first the first Corinthians, you know, love is patient, love right. is kind. So, well, so that album was actually produced in in tandem with this one yeah they produced them at the same time and there was and it was initially supposed to come out before this one Mm -hmm. and then they kind of pushed green ring up to try and really like build the audience um which good move on their part well i presume that the end of the green ring 12 parter was the end of everything that we were going to get and i don't know maybe they had planned that that there wasn't going to be the end that they wanted to um but yeah I think McCusker made the decision to put out Green Ring first to try and get like uh, trying to get the audience back on board with a Novacom esque uh, or or Blackguard esque. Right. Well, and it's an interesting thing that yeah. I mean, we we addressed up front that these are all written and directed by McCusker, and obviously they have writers' rooms, and it's not just one man sitting down and banging out an entire saga. Mm-hmm. But like, it feels very much like McCusker was like, all right. I'm like the OG Odyssey guy. Yeah. I do these mysteries really well. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just going to spearhead this big saga, put a lot of energy into that. That'll kind of get the show. And then everyone else, all the other writers they had got to, you know, have their own individual episodes on clanging symbols. Yeah. But this was like, this was McCusker's baby. Yeah. This was, this was him playing hero and just being like, all right, get on my back. I'll save the show. No worries. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, he did a great job. And the fact that, like, my strongest memories with the show are connected to this album and with Novacom, the fact that they're both McCusker, shows that uh, I no- think something... Nova- Novacom wasn't McCusker? Oh, wait, never mind. I just cut myself... I, I stepped in to say the wrong thing. Sorry. You're good. Yeah, I was right. Okay. Yeah. I will because I I thought about it beforehand, which I normally right. don't do. Right, right. Because Blackard <laughs> is Lawler. Yep. Novacom mm. is McCusker, and then this Green is Ring is McCusker. McCusker. Right. Right. Lawler. Lawler. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think ties the bind is McCusker. Yeah. No, we've been over that. It is McCusker and a Hoobler bummer, too. Because <laughs> I really wanna, I really wanna be down. I really wanna just be like McCusker, always good. Lawler. Yeah. <laughs> He definitely started out strong, but now... Yeah. No. Uh, anyway, let's just get into the episode. All right. So, yeah, the the episode itself begins with Matthew and Emily playing uh, Fact or Urban Legend. Yeah. Great game. Didn't you play that as a child? Uh, no, I didn't. No. There's no. a lot of games in Odyssey no. that I didn't play as a child. <laughs> like, uh, what was it? Zapazoids. Well, yeah, I didn't play true. Zapazoids. Gloobers. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Gloobers. No. Uh, what is it? There's there's one game that Wit and Connie play. It's like right thing for the wrong reason or something like that. He's like, oh, it's this great old game I used to play all the time as a kid. It's just like people do the right things for the wrong reason or the right thing for the right reason. I don't remember that one. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I mean, tweet at us if you get my deep cut Odyssey joke. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the, Emily is bummed out and not, yeah, she, she's in a bit of a funk and uh, Matthew being dumb middle school boy really pushes her on that. Yeah, uh, like, why are you having such a hard time with this? Which, to be fair, you couldn't really, like, if this is the, is this their introduction essentially as characters no no, no, no they, they've, they've been, been around friend. for for two albums yeah okay or yeah 
51, 52. This is 53. And we so. don't get any information as far as why she's upset. With the exception no, of... She's upset tinkering. because Matthew's hanging out with his other friends and not her. Yeah. So he's right to be mad at her. Yeah. He's not like, good about it. No. No, like, they're both dumb here. Yeah. Okay. Like, As children frequently are. Right. Right. But, yes. No, Ma- Matthew is not is not particularly considerate. Also, Emily shouldn't be mad that he's hanging out with other people. Also, think of a better name than Tinkering Group for your, like, to insult the thing. Wait, what, is, what is it even called? I don't know. She calls it Nerd Club at one point, too. Oh, yeah, she does funny. call it ner- Nerd Club. But I think it's like the computer science. Yeah, I don't know. They've they've got something, but they it's got a, Nelson it's, there, right? It's, it, the... it's a group of friends, which in this episode just be ends up being Matthew and Nelson, who go over to um to the the junkyard that Wally Haggard runs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because that's and... what unattended children do. They go to junkyards. <laughs> right, and he's got like you know he gives them electronics to take apart and poke mm-hmm. at and whatnot, and that's that's their club, yeah. um, which sounds pretty pretty great um and so yeah uh they're they're walking through the woods and emily is upset and matthew and they they get into a little fight and matthew this this is this is a a tr- not not necessarily a trope just like a decision in staging that happens a lot and always bugs me hmm. is matthew and emily part ways in the woods and immediately Emily is run over by Jay almost. Yeah. And it's like Matthew would turn around and be like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. There's like, no transition. There's, or anything. there's no time for him to be far enough away that Jay coming through here. Wouldn't bring him back in. Yeah. No, no, it is immediate where she just like, it, maybe she rounded a corner, like a right. soundproof corner. So, so the, 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 the example of this that i recently ran into that just bugged me so much in 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 a show that i think is brilliant called the expanse Mm -hmm. there is a scene in which characters like get into a fight Mm -hmm. part ways one character goes out a door the other character turns around and there is a monster behind him (laughs) and they go to fight the monster and the other person who left the room just continues to not be involved and i'm like just like (laughs) you couldn't hear anything like like, the banging on the door well like there there's the monster's like through a window, so they're going out to go after the monster. It's like, no, no, no. You go and you grab your friend who you just fought with, and you're like, hey, we gotta go beat this monster. Yeah. You yeah. don't like <laughs> let them go on their own way when it is immediate. Like, he turns around and it's there. <laughs> and that's the way this scene feels as well is that Matthew, like, takes two steps away and Jay smashes into Emily with a bike. Yeah, thankfully, uh, she's not physically. Uh, yeah. significantly injured well I bro- I don't, he doesn't actually hit her i think he crashes like he tries to swerve around yeah. her and wrecks but yeah, yeah like watch where you're going type thing yeah uh <laughs> yeah i broke my sister's arm on a bike when she was little <laughs> i felt bad i accidentally run it ran into her i it wasn't it wasn't intentional but she will never let me live it down that's that the asabo way yeah it's at least the women that's for sure wow you want to leave that on the episode, Andrew? No, God, you know no. who listens to this? <laughs> My sister, Colleen, and she will never let me forget it. <laughs> Love you. Come on the show sometime. <laughs> Wait, was that, is that that just further proves your point that she'll never let you forget it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oof. So yeah, <laughs> so there's this whole yeah there's this whole thing where jay's like racing through this bike trail Mm -hmm. to go see this plane crash at gower's field which is a sound clip that is like baked into my mind (laughs) truly it's yeah it i'm the overlap between that album promo was playing and the time that i spent on witsend.com right Part, or uh, witsend.org, I believe. Right. This is exactly the thing, is I think in them trying to really hype up this album and whatnot, and it being a good one, you would be listening to Other Odyssey yeah. on Witsend Online, and they would constantly be, plugging be playing... This the, you can get the new one. It's out on now, the you know Green Ring Deluxe Edition or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I heard this promo a lot, and so some of these lines are just like, yeah, branded mm-hmm. onto my mind. Um, 
and so yeah emily emily's like you know there's a plane crash gower's field is anybody hurt and he's like yeah like thousands of people <laughs> yeah. were on the plane and she's like i don't think planes have thousands of people and then jay makes the dumbest joke that also is it not- lands <laughs> i thought it was funny <laughs> But it's not, it's one of those jokes that is outside of the context of the show almost, where it's like, this is Paul McCusker making a joke. This is not, like, there's no reason for Jay to make this joke. Yeah. He says, what does he say? He says, "Uh, I would would love to stay in chat, but that would keep me from leaving. Oh, no, no, no. That's a great joke. No, that's not the one I'm talking about. Oh. Before that, my friend, before that, when he's talking about how many people are on the plane, she says, I don't think airplanes carry thousands of people. And Jay says, oh, tell that yeah. or that's tell that not, to my dad, my dad. That's that's not it how my seem- dad feels about the overhead compartment or just like it's it's the the joke is like there's never enough room in the overhead compartments for luggage. Yes, because there are thousands of people on the thing but then it's like he wrote the joke and then was like oh wait jay hasn't flown on airplanes enough for that to like yeah work so then he's like it's gotta be his dad (laughs) so then jay is making a joke about like his dad's travel issues but like he wouldn't like i don't think his dad's coming home and going like it was so hard to fly because i couldn't find room on this (laughs) airplane like i don't know it's What's the deal with overhead compartment space? It's it's a it's a weak joke that is really really like Did it's such a side. walk to get there. Yeah, it's a real walk. It's it's super wordy. I I swore I could have sworn you were talking about the <laughs> I would love to stay in chat, but that would keep me from leaving. Which <laughs> is a good joke. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. It, <laughs> it comes across as kind of Rodney Rathbone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which oh. is very much the vibe that I think we're supposed to get from him. Yeah, except this. Jay Jay's like Jay's like a goofy Rodney. Yeah, yeah. Rodney was objectively like I don't know, right. Rodney's bad. like a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> Jay is like, what if he was like the goofiness of Rodney in like someone who actually has redeeming qualities? Yeah. Well, and that like, you know, he's certainly not going to get in trouble or he, any bad stuff he does. You're certainly not going to know about kind of way. Right. Um, so, so yeah, then, then he goes away and well, uh, as he's Emily, biking away, yeah. Emily's like, "Hey, you forgot your backpack." He's like, "I didn't bring one," and then just like keeps going. And then yeah, <laughs> Emily opens it up and it's full of money, and she yells after him. Yeah, he doesn't hear it, which is probably good because knowing Jay, <laughs> he would use it to buy an absurd amount of Elvis paraphernalia, and then we would have a great, great issue on our hands. <laughs> Well done, Andrew. Thank you. <laughs> well done. That is a callback to last week's episode that we recorded two months ago. Hey! I can't believe I did that. I cannot either. The miracle of I modern medicine. There's joke. a little bit of extra dopamine in my brain, and look what we're getting. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so then Jay arrives at the plane crash where not Link Wainwright is reporting. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, sorry. No, this isn't Jay arriving. This is This is classic Odyssey a news report Mm -hmm. where he is talking through it that then fades into... So there's one man being treated at the scene, one at the hospital, Mm -hmm. and one who stumbled into the woods. And then we pan out through that, through the radio at Wit's End. Yeah. Amazing to uh, Wit and Eugene talking about the last plane crash that there was in Odyssey. Right. And Wit's Uh, like, I can't think of the last time there was a plane crash in Odyssey. And Eugene says, seven years ago. (laughs) Seven years, four months, and like 28 days. An experimental aircraft crashed uh, on the landing strip at uh, Odyssey Airport. And Wit's like, huh, I didn't hear about that. Eugene's like, yeah, well, the college kept it on the down low. And Wit's like, well, then how do you know? He's like, well, I crashed it. He's (laughs) like, I didn't know. I didn't know you were, were an aviator. And he's like, well, I uh, I designed the plane. So it only fit, uh, yeah, it only seemed fitting that I that I operate it. And then yeah. he uh, makes a comment later. I found out that my uh, schematics made excellent paper airplanes. Yep. And then and then Wit's like, all right, I got to put up these help wanted signs. And Eugene's like, I don't think that's reason to fire me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fact that I crashed this plane. Uh, oh, man. This. This first episode, I do have it memorized. Yeah. Uh, um, but also the 
<laughs> the implication there that seven years, like, that seven years ago Eugene did something, I'm just like, so was that pre-album one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> or al- the- album three is when Eugene arrives. Yeah. So, like, is it is it prior to album three? Or is it... Uh, it's just one of those episodes that they don't how, talk how about because there's is, no biblical moral for crashing a plane. How long ago is seven years? Is this before Novacom? Like, is this before Eugene lost his memory? Is this after? I'm thinking post marriage to Katrina, but that's just me. so. This, this is this is then post Eugene returns because we yes. don't see Eugene. It's yeah, a, he's not back in Odyssey. Yeah, I'm thinking post Eugene. This returns. is during the Hand Up era, mm, perhaps. <laughs> You remember hand up? <laughs> not not fondly. <laughs> See that 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 that's my my sweet spot for Odyssey right there. Oh. Hand up. <laughs> like you're robbing a bank. Um no, not hands up. Hand, hand up. Uh, so <laughs> So yeah, they uh, they Wit, Wit explains that he's trying to trying to find some extra help because Connor Connie is taking this summer art class. Oh yeah, that that's important to establish that this is happening during the summer. Mm-hmm. This is very much like yeah. between two years of school. Like yeah, it's summer. That's why the kids are just doing their own thing. And yeah, whatever. it's so great too because yeah. there's a uh, what this is when we get the. Uh, announcement for the carnival archie's carnival is in town yeah and we get the uh before before archie's carnival there is this weird thing which so you probably have a better memory of green ring than i do certain parts of it this this episode for sure (laughs) because i yeah i i vaguely remember some of the stuff that's coming but i do not I did not remember that Monty was in these episodes. Yeah, so. I I remembered it. The like, it made sense the minute I heard it, but I didn't think about it when we were talking about covering Green Ring that Monty was going to be in. Yeah, it because- and like I right, and I remember like certain people. Like I know who the stiletto is when yeah. they reference the stiletto. Yeah. I'm like, oh yes, I know exactly who that will be. Um, but then like other stuff is yeah. Mm-hmm is fully yeah oh man i just remembered who the stiletto is now <laughs> <laughs> but so th- there's this weird thing that oh, i'm you like you guys I, don't even know <laughs> i i bet this becomes relevant later but it is weird how hard eugene hits it here where he's like connie's teacher is benjamin trask who's yeah. brilliant yeah and he's i'm like great amazing person I, I assume benjamin trask matters at some point yeah during yeah this arc. exactly <laughs> The minute I heard that, I was like, okay, making mental note, <laughs> important character. Right. Um, and yes, then an ad comes on for Uncle Archie's Carnival, which Wit hates. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get back into... Uh, He's like, ah, whenever, you know, Uncle Archie's Carnival comes to town, so does Trouble. And, like, he's got his weird supernatural, like, it's the, every, like, big arc needs supernatural wit to know that it's something uh-huh. bad's happening <laughs> and so and so they 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 do so they do we we set up a little bit of supernatural wit here yeah it also yeah it it's really funny to me that it's like uh oh, this is like you know uncle archie's carnival is shutting down for the last time so they're coming back to odyssey where they got started and i'm like we've spent the last you know at, at the time of this episode the last 20 plus years in odyssey and we've never heard of uncle archie's carnival the thing that wit hates most in this world that was exactly my thought it will and my thing is so if he hates it so much and that he knows that when it comes to town bad things happen the last time that this happened was 50 years ago so has wit been in odyssey for 50 years wait wait, no 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 it's been going on for 50 years the carnival's been going on for 50 years. No, but I I was under the presumption that it started in Odyssey and then it went other places and then no, it no, was no. like it, coming it come, back. It's, it, it's come back like yearly, I think. Oh, that is how carnivals work. Right. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They Fair enough. Been, they've been on the road for 50 <laughs> years, <laughs> never hitting the same place twice. Hey. It's a miracle. Well, they are criminals, maybe? spoilers some of them are i think maybe i don't remember (laughs) time will tell yeah certainly will 
Um, so yeah, then Wit gets a call from Dr. Graham. Mm -hmm. Um, tells him to go down to the hospital. One of the plane crash victims mentioned you by name. (laughs) And then, uh, and Emily shows up and is trying to get a hold of Wit, but then he's just got to like run out of there. Um, and so Emily ends up talking to Eugene, um, shows him the backpack and he's like, oh, uh, that is a lot of money. Let's call the police. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing we need to do is call the police. Yeah, so then then we cut to the woods yep. where uh, Dirt Bag, I, I'm sorry, Dirk Beggs yes. um, is hurt and uh, hurt. is calling Bad. <laughs> and is calling someone he's not supposed to. Mm-hmm. And then, I know I wasn't supposed to call you. And oh then this God. great detail that I noticed on my third listen today. Oh, that's right. <laughs> wow, this is a triple prep. I, uh, I... <laughs> I had a long drive. I listened to it during my lunch break to to do the actual prep, and then I had a drive home, and I listened through it once, and then I still had another like fifteen minutes to go because it was a long drive, and so I started playing it again immediately when it ended. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and so the third time through, I heard this moment that I love because it sets up what we will come to later. But at, right when right when Dirk hangs up, there's a splash. Yeah, I noticed that too. Is that so? That does that does matter later. That splash is important. The splash just sets up the fact that his phone is missing next to water, which is where uh, Matthew finds it. So that's him being on his phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but there's we, no bit where like the phone is wet or anything like that. I don't think so. Okay, no. okay, yeah, that is that is cool. That I did notice that on this listen through too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I that is the least. The, the, there's. Right, there's this thing... Attention to detail, we appreciate it. Yeah, there's this thing that this episode does in two different instances, which we're about to come on, where, like, so he's then, like, he he tells the person on the phone that he's going to Hagler's junkyard, Mm -hmm. which we don't know, like, we don't know what that is, Mm -hmm. and then they immediately... Ex- like i presume the, it's like an elephant graveyard <laughs> <laughs> but like we up till this point we don't know what Hagler's junkyard is and then the next scene fully explains it yeah and they'll do that again and i'll call attention to it when they do it the second time so we then jump to the junkyard and ted humphreys not link wainwright um is there doing some reporting jay runs up and mm-hmm. is like hey you're ted humphreys the guy that my parents fall asleep to on the news yeah and he's like yeah um and and he explains that he does TV and radio yes. to simulcast, <laughs> which feels like the just feels like McCusker preemptively answering questions. Yeah, <laughs> where Jay is like he wants Jay to be able to recognize this guy from TV. Mm-hmm. But we previously heard this guy on at the Wits radio. End, and we know that Wits End would never have a TV. Yes. So then McCusker's like, oh, I got a quick write in. <laughs> yeah. He does TV and radio simultaneously, which, like, is, is that, that a thing? ESPN does it for major sporting events, and that's the only other place I've. So they, they just broadcast the TV audio on the radio? Um, sometimes they have special radio announcements. See, this is the thing, right? Do they ever not? I th- I think because for the like the Super Bowl and like big sporting events they just use the TV audio, but I know for like NFL football games and stuff like that they have separate announcers. Right. So, yeah. I whew, the one time we're listening to sports radio, uh, I haven't listened to enough of it to know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, so that yeah, there's that. So then yeah, Detective Pole House Grumpy McGoo mm-hmm. shows up, threatens to arrest Humphreys for, you know, being too close. Yeah. And then dis- is like in, I don't know, one of the largest leaps anyone has ever made, looks at Jay and goes, are you Jay? Yeah. And he's like, I didn't yes. steal that gum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Pole House is like, your uncle's Wally Hagler, and Wally Hagler's horrible, so you must be horrible also. And you're, you know, if I could preemptively arrest you, I would. Yeah, that hasn't aged well. I was going to bring that up. <laughs> it hasn't aged well. It also just flat out sucks. I, yeah. If... <sighs> I, 
I think that there is, but I don't really want redemption for Pole House. No. <laughs> I want Pole House to be considered a villain because there is a child and he sees him and goes, If I could preemptively arrest you, if I, I could would. throw you in jail for your uncle's crimes, I would. Because I don't believe that anybody who is related to a criminal could not be a criminal. Child. Yeah. Who I am only meeting now but recognize on eyesight as Jay. Who Almost is, immediately. Right. I'm like, he looks at him. He goes, you're Jay. I just got here from Connellsville. I know your uncle from Connellsville. He showed me a picture of you so that I could interrogate you someday. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how he's supposedly re- recognizing him. Whatever. But it sets up that... Jay's uncle is Wally Hagler, and we mm-hmm. immediately go, oh, that's the Hagler's junkyard they just referenced. Yes, exactly. Where and then Mr. Dirtbag yeah. is going. Right. And and Humphreys is just a He's like a walking, talking, um, exposition man here. Yeah, it's where very then, helpful. Where then he's like, Oh yeah, Pole House used to work in Connellsville. Oh. He's not very nice, but he's a good cop. Yeah. Not much for social skills, but he's a good he's a good cop. Yep. And then uh yeah, and then we jump back to well, we jump over to the junkyard where uh mm-hmm. where Dirtbag shows up and uh and Wally lets him in. Yeah, yeah. So basically Wally's really confused as to what's happening and he's coming in and his voice is super gravelly. Like good good gracious. He is a he is a gristled man. Um Wally or Dirt? Wally. Or, okay. y- no, Dirk. Yes. Yeah. Dirk. Dirk, Dirk sounds Dirk, like he's dead. Dirk sounds miserable <laughs> I mean, at this moment, is, and he's like he looks stumbling sick. in, yeah. and and uh, Wally makes the comment that he looks like death sucking on a bad lemon, which is another joke that's just in in here forever. Points to brain. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. No. It's a voiced by a na- guy whose last name is Citrano, which sounds like Citra. Sol- oh, I was thinking it was cilantro. I literally, nope. I read it, and I was like, what? No, this guy's last name know, is cilantro? I, I was just going to make a citrus joke, because lemons. I don't know. It oh, was okay. a leap. Yeah. Well, you know, citrus is... Never mind. You can't, you can't win them all. Yeah. Um, and so, just, just like McCusker, not all my jokes land. <laughs> oh, well done. Well done. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm calling myself out. Hey, you, I... I mm. I think it's time we get a soundboard. I don't know what I have to do to make it happen. I've said it before, but I think we need to have, like, buttons for applause and things when one of us makes a joke. Maybe that would just encourage bad behavior. I'm not sure. Anyway, so he, um, Dirk is, like, refusing help from Wally because, like, he, like I said, looks really rough. He sounds really rough, and he's clearly very shaken up, but he's coming in there just being, like, you know, you've got to listen to me. I've got to talk to you. Like I'm here. I'm I'm on business from the stiletto. Uh, he names drop name drops the bad guy, and uh, Wally laughs and is like, "Oh, nobody's ever seen him. Like he retired, and you know all of the classic that right. villain isn't real tropes." Right, right. Well, and yeah, and and Wally's like, "Look, I don't want to like I I don't want to be in on yeah. any of this. Like mm-hmm. I'm clean. Like you know." get out of here basically and then dark pulls a gun on him yeah and he's like you're gonna you know you're gonna listen to me right and yeah you i i need to monologue to someone it's gonna be you (laughs) exactly Um, and then uh (laughs) and then right so there's this whole thing where yeah the stiletto has been dead for years also no one has ever seen him Mm -hmm. um but you know while or dark's like you know you know it's the stiletto because you know he's the stiletto yeah um (laughs) because the stiletto is the stiletto right um yeah the criminal this... to work in heels <laughs> there's that too <laughs> um and so <laughs> no just just don't, only only men can be violent criminals andrew mm. so yeah wally really wants to get dirk to a hospital he's like absolutely not um and then uh yeah then we get then we jump to uh nelson mm-hmm. being terrified in the woods and then matthew scaring him um, yeah, yeah, he's basically Matthew's giving him a super hard time because Nelson is just paranoid about, you know, what creepy crawlies with beady little eyes and things. Um, I know. Especially a guy who lived in the woods during Kidsboro. Yeah, very surprising that he's not comfortable with the outdoors. And this is post Kidsboro, canonically, I believe. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> maybe maybe the trauma from being in the woods could be a yes. PTSD thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's um, having uh, hallucinations. But but yeah, and then this is where he reveals that hey, no one else is coming to the club. And Matthew's yeah. like, you know, if you're so scared of the woods, why are you in them? He's like, well, I'm coming from the plane crash. Mm-hmm. Um, and then something shiny catches Matthew's eye because he's a bird. <laughs> and it's a silver Appleberry smartphone that is over by the water. Hey. And you're like, if you're thinking to yourself, hmm, who could this smartphone belong to? We cut scenes and Dirk goes, huh, I can't <laughs> find my <laughs> cell phone. Yeah. Like, it's the same thing when you're like, what could Hagler's junkyard be? And then they're like, Jay's uncle is Wally Hagler. It's yeah. Like, what could, whose phone could this be? Dirk's like, where's my phone? Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're, we're, we're really not leaving much to... Uh, no, to... it's just, it's such a funny thing where it's like, you could have left these mysteries hang, but instead you'll make little, you'll like, you'll leave them hang for characters in the show, but not for us, the audience. I guess when it comes Is to that a phone. kid's show thing? I don't know. It's just, it's, it's interesting that like, they're going to spend episodes upon episodes trying to get into this phone and figure out what's going on and we figured out that it was right and we know immediately that it's dirks yeah um yeah and then then uh jay shows up Mm -hmm. and dirks like well you gotta go get rid of him and while he's like hey jay and jay wants to ask him about what pole house told him and while he's gotta be cagey because he's you know yeah there's a guy holding a gun to him yeah um <laughs> naturally which but i i think well he does a pretty good job overall no yeah he's a i i i have like a lot of pretty good feelings about wally as a character um and, and jay actually in this arc jay is great i think that they make jay almost worse of a character post post green ring time will tell and um yeah and so so wally ends up giving jay a box um with a gps in it Mm -hmm. to take over to the club um which is where we kind of get the implication that they meet there at the at the junkyard and wally kind of sponsors that which is another thing that just like establishes wally as like a A good guy guy. (laughs) um which this whole like a lot of this saga is going to be about kind of like overcoming your reputation and whatnot oh yeah and that's being set up very nicely here. We're like, we're getting Wally established as like this solid person mm-hmm. while we're being told that he is, you know, this horrible criminal who's, you know, so bad that he's, he's going to make his nephew evil. Yeah, that's uh huh. so great. <laughs> yep. So not great. And anyway. then and then we jump to uh back to Wit's End, mm-hmm. uh where Eugene is talking with Emily and is like, Yeah, so they the police can't actually come uh because of the plane crash and she's like, There's thousands of dollars here and the police can't come and Eugene's like, Well, it is what it is, but I guess we can look up the serial numbers on a few of these bills and see if yeah. they're in like the stolen bill database. Yeah. And and Emily's like, oh, great, awesome. Like, yeah. we're actually doing something. Yeah. Uh, which is... Detectives. Yeah, really cool and fun. I don't know. I really like the... Jones the and role. Melsner Detective Agency. <laughs> Ooh. That's a little creepy because she's a child. And he would be her sidekick. So, yeah, no. I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna maybe the Melsner hard Mel's, pass. Maybe the Melsner is, is, is Buck. Oh... <laughs> interesting <laughs> not much better though no. still very creepy and slightly predatory <laughs> really i mean in my head buck is like yeah he's probably a solid school. five years older than her i don't think it's quite that but it might be close well yeah i suppose yeah. there's there's a high school middle school thing between the yeah, two of them but. definitely definitely anyway well um, buck is street smarts as we'll as we'll learn oh yes Street smarts. That was a terrible John Mulaney impression. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, truly bad. Yeah. You know, we referenced Mulaney on our first episode of this show. Did we? Aw. He's been with us this whole time. And we've referenced him probably... Well, I don't know how many you've left in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. This one probably won't make it in either. That's fine. Um, then we jump back to uh, the Hagglers. Um junkyard Mm -hmm. where uh dirk has fallen asleep and wally continuing to cement himself as being solid yeah grabs dirk's gun Mm -hmm. and then calls for an ambulance and the police yeah and And the police 
fades out, like, uh-huh. dramatic. And then we go to the hospital. hospital. Yeah, where Witch showing up, um, to, because obviously the person mentioned him by name, and, yeah, tells him tells him that his name was the only thing that he said before he slipped back into a coma, um, and they couldn't find any identification on him, so they hoped that Wit could identify him. Uh, so... Yeah, so this is plane crash the plane crash victim that got taken to the hospital. The one there's one that ran away. And isn't there a third one? Is the third one the pilot? Are the pilots what? okay? So there there was so there was a person who got airlifted to Connellsville. Oh, that's that's what happened. Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who was presumably the pilot, mm-hmm. assuming that, you know, dirtbags isn't mm-hmm. and Monty isn't. Yeah. Um, then this third person would be yeah. So anyway, Wit walks in, looks at him, obviously immediately recognizes that it's his grandson, and so we get this, like, Wit is so shocked uh, moment, but he's not saying that it's Monty. And so right, because like, we got to build is suspense. What is it? Yeah, <laughs> the one time in this episode they actually do build suspense, and it's for, like, I don't know, 20 seconds maybe. Right. <laughs> and it's uh, it's Monty Whitaker. Yeah, Monty Whitaker Dowd. Dun, dun, dun. dun. Yeah, crazy. Like we said, come, you know, Monty coming back from album seven was his last appearance. Yep. The voice actor uh, mm-hmm. had done some work in between in, you know, the album seven and what whatever this one is, album 53. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But a character who appeared originally in family portrait portraits, number 11, like before Odyssey yeah. was Odyssey, this character appeared, but has only shown up in a handful of episodes. Um, yeah, and the fact that they decided to bring him back, I mean, I I don't remember explicitly what they do with him as a character, but obviously I know he's involved in, like, the unraveling of some of this stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it, though, and I'm really excited. I mean, that's where the episode goes out. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we go right into a, to a Chris outro, mm-hmm. um, which... Ends with a line that I guess we have to use for our episodes now, where <laughs> she always goes, and I'm Chris, hoping you'll join us next time for another episode of Adventure, or for another Adventure in Odyssey or whatever. Another oh, yeah. For adventures an- of- yeah. And I'm, and I'm Chris, hoping you'll join us next time for another yeah. adventure. Anyways, this, this one she goes, I'm Chris, hoping you'll join the conspiracy next time. time. Yeah. <laughs> Which, What? <laughs> join it drink the kool-aid right well where where i was like oh are we promoting conspiracy (laughs) theory here focus i don't think that's what we want it's not 2016 (laughs) so anyways i i do i i do so we are gonna put those words in nathan's mouth which you will hear in like five minutes so (laughs) we'll say less than that probably um there is a there's one discussion question that I find interesting that you brought it up. Uh, oh, no. So Detective Polhouse believes that Jace Mouse's entire family is dishonest. Have you ever thought ill of someone because his or her siblings had a bad reputation? Is Detective Polhouse the good guy in this question? <laughs> like, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm yeah. definitely concerned. We've already established that. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, but but yes, I think I think very ill of Andrew because mm-hmm. of uh, Brendan. You know. Yeah, yeah, naturally. Well, <laughs> there's a joke to be made there. Fun fact: Dil- uh, Brendan used to be Dylan's uh, small group leader at church. That's true. For one whole year. Yep. <laughs> All right. Wait, no, no, no. Yeah, around the time of these episodes. <laughs> Wow, interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, it would have been like maybe a year or two after because it was your seventh grade year. You, yeah, it was my seventh grade year. Yeah. I would have been, what, 13 in seventh grade? And this yeah. episode came out when I was 12. Yep. So. Fresh on the brain. So Yeah, no, actually, this would have been because this is March of 20. Yeah, no, this would have been while I was I was 12 in seventh grade. There you this go. This is literally airing while Brendan is my is one of my youth leaders. Wow. The more you know. Look at all this continuity, this timeline. Do you have anything you want to say to wrap up uh, part one of the Green Ring Conspiracy, Dylan? Nope. Just want to talk about part two. Yeah, me too, honestly. It was great. I, I'm really excited. I'll 
definitely I felt I feel bad only having listened to it like twice for this one. <laughs> I'm a, really? Eh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I I like it enough to listen to it again. <laughs> I can't imagine I will listen to the, the next one more than twice. That's fair. Well, might only even be once. Depends on yeah, just how timeline stuff works out. But but yeah, that's that's all we got here. Um, Andrew, you plugging anything? No, nothing this week. I yeah, I am in the throes of school, mm. uh, so I'm very busy. I suppose. Well, nah, no, I don't have anything to plug. All right. What about you? Um, you got anything? I do not. Um, but I, 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 I do have a, uh, I do have a review to read. Really? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. So we've got a new five star review from Two Laos Fifty Seven, um, that just says favorite podcast. I love your banter and thoughtful reflections. You guys have honed in on your style and format so well over the last couple years. It's clear that you both put in hours of research into each episode. It's also super meaningful that you acknowledge the nuance of loving this show while remaining critical of its challenges in both theology and cultural conservatism. I haven't listened to much new Odyssey, so I listened to the Rydell saga along with both of you. Loved your takes. Hilarious, but excited to get back to old Odyssey. Looking forward to the perfect witness. Some of your episodes in the whole... Oh, some of the best episodes in the whole show, in my opinion. Aww. I still quote Mr. Holstein. Aww. So. great great oh that was so nice i know that was so nice and, and well-rounded like yeah. well well put thank you I have thank you reviewer submitted academic writing that is less <laughs> less uh less well written than that fair but enough thank you very much and yeah hope hopefully you did like the perfect witness because we are uh recording this uh after or we are recording this before any of that's aired no before oh actually today as we're recording part one went out yes yeah exactly just yeah because i got a text from my sister this morning being like how did you forget that i love the perfect witness (laughs) (laughs) so it comes full circle i freaking told you so (laughs) all right so that that's all for uh this episode and we will see you next week for episode 680 the green ring conspiracy part two bye guys bye Wadfam Chalk Pod is a presentation of the Lidditz Podcast Co-op. Follow the podcast at Wadfam Chalk Pod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at wadfamchalkpod at gmail.com. The Green Ring Conspiracy Part 1 was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Sabo, and edited by Dylan Weaver. I'm Nathan Haverstick, hoping you'll join the conspiracy next time on the Wadfam Chalk Pod.